So, it's been a little bit since we went over the entire truck. Just kind of like a catch up of where exactly we are. We're almost at 20 episodes now. This could very well be the 20th episode when I start to think about it. I've done, <laughs> I've done some things in the background that I never showed you guys. And just a generality of what exactly we have to do to get this bad boy on the road. So let's go butthole and brisket on this 1954 international chassis swap. And let's just see everything off the top of my noggin that we're gonna have to do to this truck. Let's get at it. Welcome to Hi-Ho Stable Garage. So, a real easy one that we're gonna have to do is basically get this hood situated on top of this truck. It's a fairly basic one. We lost an episode, basically. I showed you guys a whole bunch of stuff, but we'll get into it some other time. This hood fits fine on one side, but on the other, there's a little guy in the way. Let me take this off and I'll show you exactly what's going on. Now, I wasn't sure how much of an issue this guy right here, my vacuum booster, was gonna be when we were building this truck, or as we were retrofitting the cab on and doing our bottom bit. It's not that bad, tell you the honest truth. This right here is a Subway sandwich long. It's a 12 inch vacuum canister. We basically, when we put the hood on, the hood's hitting like right here. We could do some sketchy stuff, you know, we could cut into the hood and cut into the fenders. Maybe might not even need a cut, but do some sketchy stuff to make this guy fit. But I think all we're gonna do is just spend the money or find something, you know, that we can use a seven inch vacuum canister and go with that. I think it will be a much better outcome at the end of the day. I won't have to do any cutting on this side. Another big one, elephant in the room, is this front clip here. We have blowout on this side, that side, front end. There's pretty much blowout everywhere, but this is about a, you know, as sturdy as a spaghetti noodle. It, it's, it's not good. We need to basically completely rebuild these two front fenders, mostly of the front clip. There's a lot of work on this. Let me bring you guys in. So, as you can see, rust hole there where you have to patch. This whole fender, we have to rebuild for basically from here all the way down, duplicate that on the other side. Here, it's about as, as I said, flimsy as a spaghetti noodle. As you can see, this whole front clip section, whoever worked on this, you know, just needs to sit the, uh, the patch machine down. It wasn't even a patch machine. It was old school braze, lots of fiberglass, lots of Bondo, extreme Bondo. It wasn't good. So we had to basically redo this entire thing. As you can see, there's no more inner fenders. That was part of a video that got lost. Those are right there. Another part of the video that was lost is we cut the frame, bam, bam, right there and there. They're right here, actually. See? Big chunks of the frame. They stuck out way too far. They came out to about here. The clip actually lands pretty much right here, which is a little concerning because, you know, spinning blades are right there, but that's easy stuff. We'll work around that. Moving on to this side of the engine. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Likely pretty bad, but this is the exhaust manifold that we're looking at right here. Here, let me get a light. There we go, that's a lot better. That's the exhaust manifold we're looking at. Mimic it on the exact same other side. As you can see, it's really, really crusty in there. Aluminum head with cast iron manifolds, and I don't think these have ever been outside these studs there. So that's gonna be quite the job and a half, and it's leaking right here at this donut. Right there, that's, in the last couple videos, that's why you heard t -t 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 -t. That's that famous 5.4 Triton. This is just a two valve, fellows. It really doesn't have the spark plug issues or the cam phaser issues that the three valve and the four valve did. Eventually down the line are these tires here. The two fronts aren't that bad, you know, 30 second wise. They're, so they're about like a 10, 30 second, 12, 30 second. It's not that bad, but the rims on these, 
when we put these tires on about four years ago, the rims on this truck, the mechanic said, there's almost no more lip. They need new rims. So before this sees the road, we got to get a new set wheels and tires. It's, it just has to happen. So minus all the finish welding, you know, that you guys know, let's go inside the cab and I'll show you guys some finish welding that you don't know. Right up in here, I think that they, this is the corner, see, driver's seat right there, or driver's seat right here, driver's steering wheel right there. Is it just behind your head? Whoever had this truck at the very beginning, cut all this out. Uh, the only thing I can think of is they were trying to get this seatbelt section right here, the seatbelt completely out, and they didn't want to destroy it. So they just cut across the entire thing. It's a good thing I have that piece. It was inside the bed of the truck when I went and picked it all up in Quebec. So we're fine there. I can actually weld that suction right back in and we'll be fine. I do not, however, have this section right here. That's unfortunate. As for the steering wheel, it's pretty solid. It's nice and mounted well, but the main bar braces here, 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 and here, Right around the bottoms, they still have to be finish welded on the back sides, as you can see. So there's a lot of finish welding on this cab, just from where you can see. The gaps on that side need to be filled up. This small stuff like that, but it's a lot of small stuff. Like right there, you know? Before we go underneath, we might as well address another elephant in the room. This is in no way ever gonna work with our box that we have outside and there's very good reason for it. The F-150 frame hikes up like this, kind of like this, like that, but it's relatively straight. Let me take you to the back here. You see that? See that? It kind of dovetails a little bit at the back, but nothing extreme, and it's only right where the sleeve section is. So what I'm getting at is we have to modify this frame section here and make it adaptable at least for our f1 or for our 1954 box the best way i could see us doing this and basically having a nice product at the end of the day also because you know the frame's rotten from right to here on both sides what we have to do is basically cut it, zing, zing, like we did on our 1996 F-150 short bed conversion. We'll cut it there and we'll make our own frame. Basically up to our short bed spec, I believe it's 115 inches wheelbase that we have to go with. And we'll reuse as much as the F-150 parts that we can, but we need new hangers and small stuff like that. But for right now, it's good to move around but before we drive it down the road, we have to do that, but it's okay. I was planning on shortening this truck anyway. We just gotta make a custom frame from the, you know, the cab back. So here's underneath the belly of the beast. Oh, kinda tooched the mic there, oops. But here's underneath the belly of the beast. As you can see, there's our cab mount right there. Kinda goes across all that, but it's blown out right here. So we have to patch this, zing, zing. Add a nice patch to the back right there. Make it nice and strong. Basically, that's again, F-150 side, fellas. If we didn't start with something so rotten, the F-150, we wouldn't have to do any of this. We're learning from our mistakes, <laughs> but you know, it's still very, very fun as a project. There's a couple other blowouts a little bit further up. There's one there, and I think there's one over there, basically where our cab mounts reside. We, we either have to do something at the top or do something on the bottom, likely do it where it is OEM. ETC, ETA, estimated time of completion for this project. Not counting paint. Paint and a little bit of body work here and there, we're not gonna count. But basically the entire truck done, minus that, what are we looking for? What I'm looking at is most likely next summer. So. There's going to be quite a lot of videos coming up on this international truck. But by summer, for me, that's basically out of winter. So April, I'm hoping, I'm hoping April will be able to put this down the road legally. So we'll see. 
There's quite a lot of work to be done to this yet. And there is a car show this September that I want to take to, so... <laughs> we'll see how things go. But I hope you guys have a little bit more understanding of what our general plan for this truck is, how we're going to go about it, and what you guys are going to see, at least on this project, in the very near future. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions on this truck, this build in particular. There's a lot of stuff going on. But if not, I'll see you guys in the next video really, really soon.